How's it going? Welcome to Sandbox Explorer. I'm Dave Higgins and the Switch is my favorite console. It's got the ability to play it on the TV, it's got the ability to play it on the go, you can play it on the couch, you can play it in bed, uh, you can play it in the car, you can play it on a train, you can play it on a plane. And you didn't have that before, you couldn't play a game, the same exact game, on your TV and then wherever you want. That's awesome. Hooray! So, my favorite games of all time are mostly open world sandbox type games. Uh, I like to be able to just run around and explore and do what I want. You know, there's a main objective that you have to follow, but you can do all these different side quests and, you know, you get to level up your character, you get to get different equipment and, you know, have all sorts of different experiences with people and places and environments. My favorite games from that genre would be, in no particular order, Borderlands 2, Skyrim, and Animal Crossing, which you can probably guess by some of the stuff I have back here. So what I want to talk about today are 10 open world games that I'd like to see on the Switch. They're not on it yet, but hopefully one day, maybe, possibly, they could be. So the first game I want to talk about is Red Dead Redemption 1, not 2. I say that because I don't think that the Switch can handle Red Dead Redemption 2. Um, it could definitely handle the first game. The Switch has more powerful, you name it, over the 360 and the PS3. So because of that, it could definitely handle the first game. The second game, I heard just recently that they had a downgrade of the graphics for whatever reason. People said that's because they're testing to see if it can work on the Switch. I don't buy into that, but you never know. The world's full of surprises. I would like to see that one on the Switch. I don't think it's going to happen. The first one, however, is definitely possible. We've seen other Rockstar games, well, one other Rockstar game on the Switch already. That's L.A. Noir, which is a really good game. Um, I've played it. I have it myself. It's open world. You know, you can go wherever you want, but it's limited. It's not the same way as you would with Red Dead Redemption. You can go all over the Old West. You can go to Mexico. You can have, you know, all these different experiences and side quests that you can't exactly get with L.A. Noir, and it's a whole different environment anyways. John Marston, great character, great story. Because the success that Rockstar's had already, they've talked about moving forward with other games on the Switch. I don't know if they're going to port anything else or just develop new ones. It'd be really awesome to see Red Dead Redemption on the Switch. The next game I want to talk about is probably never going to happen, but I'm only going to talk about it because Panic Button actually expressed that they would like to put this game on the Switch. I'm talking about Horizon Zero Dawn. Uh, that game is amazing. Uh, the story of Aloy, I don't want to give anything away even though it's been out for some years now, but if you haven't played it yet, I don't want to spoil it because the story is fantastic. The gist of it that I can talk about is that you're in a jungle area that has all these different robotic creatures that are, some are like dinosaurs, some are like other animals that you might see today. And, you know, you have to sneak around and, you know, you know, open world style stuff that you'd have side missions, main quests, you can get all these collectibles. If anybody's going to be able to port this game to the Switch, I would trust Panic Button. You know, they've come out with Doom, Wolfenstein, Rocket League. The fact that they made those look so good on the Switch and run so well on the Switch makes me believe that if for some reason Sony decided that they wanted to collaborate with Nintendo in some way and give up exclusivity and allow Panic Button, possibly, to port that to the Switch, and if Nintendo had interest in that, which I don't see why they wouldn't, um, then that would be awesome. Although it seems unlikely that something that's exclusive to another system would end up on the Switch, we've already seen this happen recently with the announcement of Cuphead on the Switch. Uh, with Xbox starting to, at least as it seems, uh, move some of their games onto the system, which who knows what that means for the future, but the fact that Microsoft's done it, and we've seen Sony slowly lacks up a bit on crossplay. So the fact that they're starting to be a little more uh, inclusive of crossplay on games might mean that they might possibly be willing to uh, have exclusives go on to another system. It's only good for business in my mind because it's unlikely that you're going to release one game that's going to get someone to buy a system. That's not always true, but if you release your game on other systems and you have a stake in the revenue from it, then why wouldn't you do that? Hopefully 
that becomes more of a thing. It seems like it's going to be, so maybe one day we can see Horizon Zero Dawn on the Switch. It'll probably have to have a lot of scaled down graphics and gameplay might might work on it. You know, I'm not upset if a game has uh, lower graphics quality. As long as the frame rate is smooth and it doesn't look blurry, because I hate that about some games. And I say that strongly. I, I can't stand when games are blurry because it just doesn't look good. To name a couple games, Ark on Switch, Ark on other systems, first of all, isn't fantastic. No hate on it, I like the concept of it, but on Switch, it just, it's unplayable, but... And Yonder Cloud Cratcher Chronicles, I had have an interest in that game, I like it, it's fun to play, but it's also really blurry. Not really blurry, but it's blurry and it bothers me. Um, anyways, so the next game I want to talk about is another game in the vein of the first one I mentioned being a Rockstar game. I really would love to see GTA V on the Switch. I see no reason not to do it. it <laughs> look at the profitability. Look at the profitability of that game. Uh, it's sold so much over all the systems from last gen to now. I don't see why it's not on the Switch yet, honestly. Uh, the PlayStation 3 and the Xbox 360 can handle it no problem. It looks great on it. I know if you go back and compare, you know, it's not going to be as good as it currently is, but it's going to be a cross between the older systems and the current gen systems. I wouldn't be upset by that. I would understand that that's a thing, and I would just play it because it's GTA. Do I need to explain any more? <laughs> So, um, I really hope that Rockstar announces that at some point. If for some reason online can't be included in the game, then I wouldn't be super upset about it if they had just the single player, and maybe they had the ability for you to have a creative character that you can use in single player. Uh, maybe after you beat the campaign forces you to play the game, even though it's a fantastic campaign, I don't see why you wouldn't. It's the best one in all of Grand Theft Auto, in my opinion. But hopefully Rockstar decides that that's something they want to do and we can see that happen. The next game I'd like to see make its way onto the Switch is Watch Dogs 2. I really enjoyed that game. Uh, I played the first one. That game was great. Um, it's lacking in a lot of ways that you may or may not have felt until you played the second game. Um, it just has so many more features. The storyline is just so much better. It, it just has so much to do in it. I think that the the city was made fantastically. The features that you have in it, the drone is great, just to be able to look around wherever you want and fly around within a certain radius. It probably wouldn't be able to have the same level of graphics. Well, probably it wouldn't be able to because it's game made for the current gen. I keep saying current gen as if the Switch isn't one, but you know what I'm saying. It wouldn't look as good, but again, I wouldn't be upset if they rendered the graphics down a bit and they were able to keep the frame rate up and the gameplay fun. I don't see why they couldn't do that. So maybe Ubisoft will put that game on the Switch. I hope so. They already have a growing catalog of games already and they seem to have a close-knit partnership with Nintendo in some ways. I know that some people have some qualms with Ubisoft about the way that they have microtransactions, transactions in games. Um, sometimes it's a little bit much, I think, but it still doesn't make me not want to play the game. Sometimes I'm like, ah, oh, I want to buy that, but uh, I don't want to buy that. So I don't. But sometimes I do, and if I really enjoy the game, then I'm not super upset about it. Sometimes you buy special editions of games where they have extra content in it that you wouldn't have had without it. And it's almost like that, in a sense, depending on how much content there is and how much it costs. I understand, but that's how I feel, so. I really hope that we see Watch Dogs 2 on the Switch at some point. The next game I want to talk about is another Ubisoft game. Um, they're actually releasing the third game in the series very soon. I believe it's May 10th. Um, of course, I'm talking about Assassin's Creed 3. Admittedly, not my favorite game in the series. I really loved the entire Ezio trilogy. Uh, the way that you travel across the buildings of Italy, it just it worked so well. It was so fluid. Um, getting through crowds, it just made sense to be, you know, conspicuous and, you know, it's just worked really great. The third one, I 
felt like it didn't exactly translate the same way. There's a lot of open spaces that you couldn't quite traverse by climbing up and going from rooftop to rooftop. It's a lot of trees, so you have to climb up one and get down. But that had a different environment and different feel. Not to mention the fact that I'm from the area, so I should like it more than I do, but, you know, I still like the game. Uh, it also paved the way for the next game that I would like to see on the Switch, and that is Assassin's Creed IV Black Flag. Uh, that's my favorite game in the series, so I really hope that the third game does well. I can't say enough about Black Flag. Uh, it's just fantastic. I have that game on PlayStation 3, on PlayStation 4. I will definitely buy it again on the Switch. Pirates are awesome. Pirates. The Assassin's Creed series mixed with pirates, those two things are great. And together, they're even better. You get to be Edward Kenway, who is not an assassin. He's an actual pirate, and he ends up killing an assassin. And he gets to essentially pretend to be an assassin, and he sort of gets muddied in between them, and gray areas of if he follows it or doesn't. But it's fantastic game. You start with a small ship that you have to upgrade to be able to handle the bigger ships. At first, all the small ones give you a lot of trouble. Those could kill you. Eventually, you can add more things to them, make it bigger, make it stronger. Then you can plow through those ones, and that becomes a whole new area you can explore. The same thing with the islands. There's so many different side activities you can do. The main quest line, the story is great. I really enjoyed that game, and I really would love to see that on the Switch. The next game I'd like to see on the Switch was supposed to actually be on the Switch, but they decided to cancel it. I understand their logic behind it, but I'm a little disappointed because I really wanted to play Steep on the Switch. They wanted to focus on support for the systems they already released it on. That's good news for those systems because they're going to give their full attention to it, and that's great. But I really wanted to play it on the Switch. Hopefully they do decide to actually go through with the port at some point in time. Um, I don't know if they will, but since they started it, maybe they'll finish it. I don't know if they just scrapped it or if they just postponed it and they said they cancel it because they don't have plans for it, but maybe they'll keep their thoughts open to it, if that made any sense. Now, the next game I want to see on the Switch is from the GameCube era. It was also out on PlayStation 2 and Xbox. It is The Simpsons Hit and Run. Uh, that game was basically Grand Theft Auto for people who had a GameCube, but they didn't have a PlayStation or an Xbox like myself. It's The Simpsons, so you have all the Simpsons comedy in it, and it has all of the open world qualities of Grand Theft Auto without the blood, the guns, the nudity, and all of the, all that. But essentially, it's The Simpsons version of Grand Theft Auto. Even though there's multiple levels, they're all very big, and they're all open world, and you can do whatever you want, so... I wouldn't say it's not an open world game, because it definitely is. It's got sandbox and open world qualities to it but it's also got different levels, so I know people could categorize it differently, but I consider it to be open world. I mean, it ran great on the GameCube, so if it ran great on the GameCube, it'll run great on the Switch, it'll look even better, or the same, I'd be fine if it looked the same, but in all likelihood, it'd probably look better, and run better, and it would just be really fun, so I hope that at some point they decide to get that on there, because it would be great. Now this next game that I want to talk about is another exclusive game to PlayStation, but I think it would be really fun to play on the Switch. Uh, it seems like a game that would be on the Switch, as a matter of fact. Um, Infamous Second Son, that was actually the first game that I had on PlayStation 4, and it was really, really fun. Um, I didn't know a lot about it, but I knew that it was open world, like I like. Some guy who was like a kind of superhero or something, so I got it, and the story was great. You get to explore this giant city and there's so many different quests that you can go on, missions, whatever. The development between the characters is really entertaining to watch and the gameplay is just great. All the upgrades you can get, you start out relatively weak but still stronger than the regular person, but you know you can't take on all these crazy enemies, but over time you go through all these upgrades that you get to your powers, you can just do all these extraordinary things, kind of like a superhero. And the awesome part about it is that you can choose to be a good guy or a bad guy and your choices affect those. So you have different outcomes throughout the story. And that's a really fun aspect of the game because you can play it multiple times through and it's always fun no matter what you do. And uh, I, I really hope that maybe if, like I talked about earlier, that Sony decides to lift its exclusivity on some games, maybe that'll be one of them, and we can find it on the Switch, because I think it would look not 
exactly the same, but it would look pretty good comparatively and it would run really well and it would just be a really fun game to play. So uh, here's to hoping. Now I know I said this list is in no particular order, but the very last game I'm gonna mention is the game I really wanna see the most on the Switch. I'm gonna do another game before that. I know I said that it's 10, but it's gonna be 11. I'm gonna have a bonus one in there. Um, another game I'd really like to see on the Switch is Dead Island. That game was awesome. Not even Riptide, Riptide was okay, but I wanna see the first Dead Island. Playing it again, going back, some of the controls for driving are a bit clunky and could be improved upon a bit, but that doesn't hinder from the experience at all. I don't drive that often. It's only to get far places, essentially. The exploration on it is really fun. I know that Dying Light is made by the same company. That game would be really fun to play too, but they're similar games. While they're very different, Dying Light has a lot of parkour and uh, you know, stealth aspects to it, and it's a great game. I'd love to see that one, honestly, but Dead Island is very arcadey compared to it and it's the kind of game where you can just go to an area and mess around and do all sorts of stuff, find all different collectibles, save people, don't save people. You get to unlock areas, upgrade items, RPG elements, upgrade your character, all different characters to choose from. And I think that would run really well. Again, that was on the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360. It got remastered for the newer systems, the current gen systems, but again, it would look like a cross between the two if it was on the Switch, and I don't see why that wouldn't happen. Um, I know that it's kind of been out of the picture since the uh, remastered version came out, but I think that it would fare well on the Switch. It would sell really well, I think. So I think that they should do that. So, yeah. And the last game that I want to mention is a game I mentioned earlier. It's one of my favorite games, and I thought that they were going to announce it at PAX East, and they didn't. No, I'm not one of those people who thought just because it was on Twitter that they meant it. I just thought because of the fact that it's been released on a bunch of systems already, um, it just makes sense to release it on the Switch because it runs better than a system that it was already on before, that it ran terribly on through mostly fault of just the hardware's capabilities of not being able to perform the way that the Switch can. They had a lot of announcements at PAX East. I didn't know, but we all knew that one game in this series that has been in development for a long time, and everyone's been wanting for a long time, was going to be announced at PAX East, but I just thought they were gonna capitalize. Maybe one day they will. It's been really difficult for this not to be a reality because it makes so much sense for it to be on the Switch. Ever since I got the Switch, I've just been thinking about how this would be perfect for it. And the game that I'm talking about is Borderlands 2. That game is just so good. Handsome Jack is my favorite villain of all time from games to movies to you, books, anything like that, you name it. He's hands down my personal favorite villain. Uh, he's evil, but he's hilarious. And the voice actor, I forget his name exactly, but he just has this way of making the character feel a certain way, and it's just great. And then Claptrap, that little dude, he's hilarious. I know a lot of people don't like him for some reason, but I think he's hilarious. You have Sir Hammerlock, you have Tiny Tina, you have Moxie, you have Hulk Hogan, I mean Mr. Torg, and then you have a list of characters to choose from that you get to play as with all different abilities. Each one of them is enticing in their own way depending on your playstyle. I personally like to play as Axton most of the time. His character just suits my playstyle the most. Um, I like to have a lot of mid-range uh, assault weapons. Um, I do like to use a sniper rifle a lot, which I know is more of Zero's uh, specialty, but I can still handle it. Upgrades that you get from Axton uh, play into that, so that's it's fun. Borderlands is great in single player and in co-op. I want to say more fun in co-op, but it's, it makes it sound like it's not that fun in single player. It's just even more fun with somebody else. All the different DLC content. My two favorite DLCs are definitely Mr. Torg's Campaign of Carnage because it's Mr. Torg and Tiny Tina's Assault on Dragon Keep. Her character is hilarious. And even though I've never played Dungeons and Dragons myself, unfortunately, I'd really like to, honestly. Um, I've really liked the way that it's narrated in that way. And it's really fun with the humor of Borderlands. It's just really fun. And I forgot to mention earlier when I was naming the characters the best one of all, Shooty McFace. As you can see, I love this game. I owned it on PC, PlayStation 2, PlayStation 4, PS Vita. That's the one I mentioned earlier about the hardware that wouldn't work that well, but it was a good try. <sighs> just the controls on that were just...
but the Switch is everything that I wanted the PS Vita to be, but it actually is. So the fact that it exists, you should put it on there. You put it on every other system. Everyone gets mad about that. Oh, you're re-releasing the same game again. Her, 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 her. I don't care. If I love the game and I want to play it on a different platform, then I'm going to get it for that platform. I've bought Skyrim for 360, PS3, PC, PS4, Switch. That's five times I've bought that game, and I have no issues with that. Uh, so I will do that again for Borderlands. I know that there was a tweet before that if we had a million tweets for Borderlands 2, then we'd release it on Switch. Um, apparently that never reached that, and I wasn't really using Twitter at all, so I wasn't even aware of that, so I couldn't contribute. I think that's a terrible way to decide whether or not you're going to put it on the system. Again, there's people like me who weren't on Twitter, who didn't know about that, who couldn't contribute to it. So if that really actually was going to be the determining factor on whether or not it was going to get released, there's a lot of people that would play the game that didn't know. So look again, I bought Skyrim five times, I bought Borderlands three times, I will definitely buy it a fourth time. So please release that, Gearbox, please. Well, that's all I have for today, so uh, thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Let me know in the comments whether or not you did. Hopefully you did. If you did like the video, then please hit the subscribe button, and I will definitely release more videos like this. Um, some will be lists, some will be reviews. I'll talk about different stuff, and we'll see where it goes. So thank you for watching.